Hello students, this is Mr. Ngobo from Achua College, ITNB campus. Uh, today I'm going to take you to lesson number two of our module number four under human resource management and six farming. Right, we're still under our topic, or our module, which is compensation management. The textbook, it's farm management, publisher J. L. Van Sheik. And then the chapter or the subtopic that we are going to cover is compensation administration. Still on page 183 to 191. Please bring your book and your pen and paper together with your facilitation summary that has been provided by Mr. Ngubo. Right. Our module that we are going to cover, it's a workforce compensation remuneration. Now, when we're covering this, we are going to cover the administration, if I might be precise, so that everyone will be on the same page. Right, when we're covering this, we are going to look at our lesson goals. Our lesson goals for today, we are going to cover the remuneration policy formulation aspects. Right, we are going to also look at the remuneration determination factors. When you are doing the remuneration, you also need to look at some factors that might cost you in terms of your planning. Okay. Also, our outcomes, we have to understand the aspect of remuneration formulation at workplace, right? In terms of the policy, we also need to understand the difference or to differentiate uh, between the internal and external factors of remuneration when you're determining the remuneration. Okay. I'm trying to squeeze this one. Right. Let's go to the next one. Right. Compensation management. We are now in number two, our subtopic, which is remuneration administration. Okay. What is administration? Maybe what are the important thing about administration? This is the segment of management that is focusing on planning, organizing, and controlling of the direct and indirect payments of employees received from the work performed. On our previous slide, we spoke about direct and indirect payment. Remember, this one, we only focus specifically on the primary. Remember primary, we've got direct and indirect. Remember secondary, we mentioned that it's like your friend. It's like it's just needs. Here it's just a strict remuneration or payments that has been done. Okay. Let's look at how to design or formulate the policy. Let's look at the aspects that needs to be taken into account when formulating the remuneration of employees in the farming business. So when we are looking at the remuneration policy formulation, we're looking at these aspects. What are things that we need to look at very, very nicely when formulating the remuneration policy? Workers must be informed about all aspects of remuneration policy and how is determined. Workers must be informed. So you inform workers. Two, workers must receive same remuneration if having the same production and quality of work. You must, employees must receive same remuneration if they're doing same work. Same remuneration, same work. All aspects must be uh, uh, explained. All right. Three, workers must receive different remuneration based on different requirements of work. Now, we've covered the third one. Four, workers must be paid for overtime for extra work. Whatever work that an, 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 uh, work, um, an employee is performed, you must get paid for it. So we covered these four aspects that are very, very sensitive, that cause conflict, that cause uh, uh, frustration. Workers must be informed about the remuneration policy, Workers doing the same work must get the same remuneration. Workers with different remuneration must have differences 
in requirements of work. And workers must be paid over time. This is how also we eliminate what we call frustration as well as conflict. Let's move on. The next six, the promotion, uh, the promotion possibility must form part of the remuneration system. The bonus system must be simple for workers to understand. The bonus size and nature must be in proportion to the business size, workers' skills, and service. The group bonus is successful if the total group production is the most important factor in the business. The remuneration based on minimum standard of product. The standard must be within the reach of the worker. There must be a clear described procedures for grievance and settlements related to remuneration. So this is the next six. Let's look at this example of this particular individual, right? This is the person that is looking to formulate the policy. We said workers, the first four, all aspects must be given or explained. Same remuneration with four, same production. Different remuneration because of differences in work requirements. Employees must be paid over time. Let's look at these employees on the next slide. Workers are doing the same work. They must get the same money. Maybe that particular individual that is far away there must get the different remuneration because of the different work requirements. All aspects must be given to these employees. Right? They must be given. When they have to work over time, they needs to be ex uh, uh, they need, it needs to be explained and they must get paid for it. Promotion must form part of these people. The bonus system must be simple. Who is getting the bonus here? The bonus size and nature must be in proportion of the whole business and the worker's skill and service. Maybe that OK there might get a different bonus. This OK will get different bonus. Right. The bonus for this group must be based on the group production. Right. The remuneration based on a minimum standard of product. So the standard must be reachable. So these employees must be able to reach that minimum standard. Right. There must be clear, 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 clear on the table here. When you're sitting on the table, there must be clear described procedures for grievance if I'm not happy. And the settlement in terms of remuneration. I think we've covered the aspects. Let's move to the next one. Let's look at B. We're looking at remuneration determination factors. These factors affect the determination of the remuneration of employees in the farm business. I just categorize it using a simple method. We've got external, we've got internal. Something that is outside the business you cannot control. The government, labor organization, labor supply and demand, employees' cost of living. You can't control these things. That's why we will find these people are sitting here while we are working here. Right? But as a manager, this you can't control as a farmer. But this one, you can control. You are within your business. Internal, business productivity, financial position, present remuneration, what others are getting, secondary remuneration, what implementations are you thinking of secondary remuneration? You still remember secondary remuneration? When you think of needs, what needs are you going to give to these individuals? Okay, let's go and explain. We said government, labor, labor supply and cost of living are outside. Right? But these ones are within the business itself. Let's look how they are going to affect the remuneration. All remuneration must remain within the limits and regulations of the policy, which is government policy. Labor trade unions claim remuneration must have a minimum wage or salary. Claim remuneration must have a minimum wage for their members. Labor 
shortage of labor in certain industry or category of workers can influence the remuneration level. So remember, this one is also outside. The shortage of labor can affect, right? Cost of living, the change in cost of living situation of employees leads to higher remuneration. So you still remember when people, the interest rate is going up, the petrol is going up, everything is going up. So money must also go up in terms of remuneration. Let's look at the inside. Business productivity or remuneration must be related to business productivity. So you must not make billions, but you're paying people peanuts. There is an example of the business that is doing this. I won't go there, but you'll know it when you're doing it because you're doing farming. Financial position, higher level of remuneration can affect the business financial cost negatively to be productive, to be unproductive, right? So we need a business to be productive. Present remuneration, the present level in the specific industry or type of workers must be taken into account. So when you're doing your remuneration, you must think about the present remuneration to employees. Secondary remuneration, the nature of secondary remuneration can affect the level of primary remuneration. Remember the secondary, the needs. So if there are no needs, so it means the primary must take over. So this is how we cover the eight factors or aspects of determining the remuneration. Okay. For us, for the summary of this lesson, which is compensation or remuneration administration, this summarizes the compensation or remuneration aspects of policy formulation for employees at the workplace. It also outlines the compensation or remuneration factors that affect the remuneration determination for employees in terms of internal and external at the workplace. So this one was covering the two aspects that you need to look at. It is the remuneration aspect of the policy formulation and determination. Okay, let's go back and check how we've covered when we reflect. We covered the factors, eight factors that affect the determination of remuneration. We also categorize them according to external and internal, where we were looking at the business, productivity. These are the aspect of formulation, where we're looking at the person who wants to formulate, comparing to the workers, that these workers, if they're the same, uh, production, same remuneration, different because of different work aspects that are doing, and then they must be explained fully. The overtime must be paid. Those are the critical ones, right? We also look at this one that cause conflict. Right, I think we covered our learning outcomes and also the subject outcome. As I mentioned that I am Mr. Ngubo, I was taking you through our lesson number two, which is module number four. I think we covered everything for today. Uh, let's enjoy the rest of the day. I will see you when we're doing lesson number three of module number four. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.